Please welcome to the stage, Howard Olson. Thank you so much. This first slide is not necessarily meant to be a joke and so forth. We're talking about the fact that uh, listening is really important when we're trying to get closer to our customers. How close to your customers are you really? So I kind of look at this as a spectrum from where we sit here thinking about, do we really, really, really know them? I hear this all the time talking with people. I think this is what my customers say all the way over to the Einstein thing where you've got the data, you've got the numbers, you really check into them and you really dig into your customers and you're understanding what they really want and what they, what they really need. In the uh, sales best practice, kind of like in this every year, we've got our world-class uh, folks and we'll find that the world-class folks will say 90% of the time that we really know. We really, really, really know who our customers are. And then we'll find the rest of the, uh, the, the participants. We'll talk somewhere in the neighborhood, about 73, 74% of them will say that they know what their customers really want. And so the point is, if we really know, like we say 90%, and the other 70% say, yeah, they know, then I just might as well hear the voice of God tell me, get off the stage here because I'm done, right? Because we all know. But the point is, we all realize that there's a whole bunch more revenue out there to be gotten. The uh, customer retention could be bumped up a little bit, and we'd all like to get a little bit more of that from our customers, right? So we better dig in a little bit deeper uh, about understanding of our customers. So satisfaction, first point. We all hear this word, satisfied customers. We're all about, sad. we want satisfied customers. We got numbers, we got surveys and everything to make this. So let me show you why satisfied customers are not really bankable. It's a great place to start, but we need to move beyond that. Kmart, we all know about Kmart. What happened to Kmart in 2002? They went bankrupt. 2001, their satisfaction score was at 74%, right where the national average is for retail. And they went bankrupt. So how good are those uh, bankable, satisfied customers? Cadillac, look at that. Satisfied score of 85%. Eight and a half out of every person that purchased a Cadillac loved them. Satisfied with it. What happened in 09? Government Motors. <laughs> Went bankrupt, right? By and by, Lincoln, who was their competitor, Right? Same year, they ran an 85, Lincoln ran an 83. Ford and Chevy were about the same amount, satisfaction, 79, 80. What happened to Ford? They're still merrily on their way, happy customers taking care of them. So, satisfied customers are important. Really, really important, but we've got to bump up the bar just a little bit more than that. The problem is with satisfaction, the bar is set too low. Satisfaction is kind of this thing that happened. It's kind of a history lesson. It's important. It's important, very important, but it's not sufficient to build customer relationships. We gotta turn on listening, just like we go back to the first slide. Honey, you know, I'm gonna listen to you all the time. So what happens when we start really, really start thinking about raising the bar just a little bit, get a little bit higher, we need to move beyond situations where what we're really focusing on are tactical surveys. A lot of us tactically get information. We know what our customer satisfaction is score. The problem is that the questions are written wrong. We ask the wrong customer group. Really, we don't get into dynamics of, of our customers. We get this satisfaction score of a you know, 4.05 and we're all happy and it looks really good. Point is, we need to move on into the strategic realm of understanding what dynamically drives this customer relationship that we really need to move into. So what's sufficient? What's sufficient beyond just that necessary? And those are two more questions that come out of the sales best practice. We've been asking that for a number of years. And we'll see that on this ESP thing where we think about the crystal ball, 
We've heard this all the time. I think my customers like this. I did a focus group with 10, 12 people on, and this is what they, this is what they like, and we're going to make these decisions for our you know, hundreds of thousands of customers because we had a small group. ESP-wise, yeah, we kind of know we say that, but are you really, really doing something about it? And we found that when we added this into the survey a couple of years ago, we found that the world-class organizations, those are the folks that have substantially higher performance, not just in gross revenue, but the retention, productivity, goes on and on and on. 74% of the world-class organizations have got a well-structured, as they say, customer satisfaction program. Now we'll see on the general case where maybe a lot of us are sitting, and it's what we're all trying to learn is that the global companies, you say less than half, less than half of the ones that said, I know, how do they know? How do you know? Less than half of the ones that say, I know, really have some way to go out and get the information, AKA known as a low bar. So the first step in this outreach moving away from this crystal ball is really we want to get information that really provides the right type of intelligence. And now it's, we've got to take the first step. We need to choose a method that's going to be something that carries a message of what we're doing across so people understand it. And also we need to have a message uh, that measures something that's really important. If we measure something, we can manage it. If we don't measure it, we kind of have to use ESP to try to figure it out. So the first step is make sure we get intelligence that's really going to do something. Raising the bar means loyalty. And really, we stop and think about loyalty. It's about delivering value to our customers. It's a lot more than just this thing called recommendation. We're really measuring trust. Yes, we want recommendations. Yes, that's really important. We want all that stuff. But the bottom line is trust. So how are we going to figure this out a little bit better? We can use this thing called the Net Promoter Score. Who's heard of the Net Promoter Program? Good. More than half of the folks in here. Net Promoter Program came around somewhere about 03, 04, 05. So it's been around less than 10 years, but it's gained a lot of traction. It's all about this thing. How likely are you to recommend in my strategic plan, that just happens to be we are. But the, but the point is, it's way more than how likely are you to recommend. You really trust me. You trust me enough that I'm going to go over and I'm going to tell Damon that you should try that. It's really easy to calculate. Percentage, because it's relative, percentage of promoters, the people that gives you 9 and 10, minus detractors, people that give you 6 and down. Promoters minus detractors gives you a net promoter score. Stop and think about it. It's pretty easy to understand. We get it. Hey, if that number ain't too big, we don't have a whole bunch of promoters. We've got way too many detractors. You start to stop and think about it. If Southwest Airlines running 60%, they got 20% or 10% are detractors, so they got to have somewhere in the neighborhood about 80% of them are in love with them. Wouldn't you like to have 80% of your customers that really, really trust you and are willing to recommend you? And don't forget about the passives. Now, what the point is, we've got three different groups to, to manage. We know about detractors, how do you take care of them? What do we take, you know, how do we take care of these passively satisfied? People sitting on the fence, move them over to the promoters. Promoters, man, we get 60, 70% of them. What a way to expand our sales force. What about to get a whole bunch of other folks to help us? So it's a really measuring loyalty, customer relationship with using this tool is just really great. So you say, why do I want to do this? There is an ROI. Quickly, because I'm running out of time here, the point is comparison to Chick-fil-A, we all heard Chick-fil-A and McDonald's. They're all running about $2.3 million to $2.5 million revenue <clears throat> at their same store. And you say, well, Chick-fil-A's NPS score is 65 plus, yeah. McDonald's about zero. We're making the same amount of money, right, Howard? Why do we want to do all this extra work, right? You go into Chick-fil-A, somebody opens the door, somebody cares about you behind the counter. The point being is what? Chick-fil-A is open 
Six days a week, McDonald's is open. Seven days a week, Chick-fil-A has 14% less expenses <laughs> for the same amount of revenue. There's a whole bunch of return on this. And you got a whole bunch of good customers that are going to go out and tell folks about you. So I think we would all like to be on this path with Chick-fil-A and with In-N-Out Burger, right? What kind of path are you on with your customers right here now today? Do you really know? What kind of path are we on with our destination loyalty? Are we up over there in the left-hand corner, out there in the middle of the sagebrush, right? Bumping along. Do you reach out to your customers depend upon a whim or a knee jerk because my revenue is going this way? Folks could be there. How about over on the right-hand side? We see that kind of broken pavement. Do you have a formal program in place? But it's ill-resourced. It happens a lot of times. Ill-maintained, and the road is really painful to be on. Or you could be on this wonderful road over here, like a lot of central Nevada is, the loneliest road in highway in America. It's desolate. You got a budget out there for it. Your plan, you're, you've got your customer outreach well in place. You're out there going after them. But you know what? It doesn't tell you anything about your customers because it's all based upon this old satisfaction stuff. Or we could be over here on the bottom right-hand side. We've got a bridge to our customers. Our customers are meeting us, and they want to engage with us. They come in to meet us because they trust us. So the question I have for you is, which of these roads are you on? Which of these roads are you on with your customers? You know, sometimes, you know, we may need to roll the window up on this path we're on so we can listen a little bit more closely to what the customers are really saying. So at the end of the day, every business is in the business of making things better for others. Or, as Tom Flick said, we're in the business of helping others to win. So how do we help others to win? We move beyond the past, the, the, the point that satisfaction is what we need to hear. We need to, need to have a program that's going to give us some more information. And we need to know where we are on building this relationship. And then we want to think about raising the bar. Thank you.